applies it every single day of his life. Send him an email on some subject and he will get back to you instantly with a heavy answer. And then he'll ask you, have you learned anything? I'd like to welcome Ambassador Juma Mwapachu to give us the keynote address. As I was coming in here this morning, I was telling uh, friends from uh, Uwezo, Baweza, What's the other one? Uh, Wazi, that, um, that my problem is that um, whenever I am requested to, to do this kind of uh, uh, deep intellectual uh, work, uh, I, I normally put my thoughts together just before I come here. Uh, or oh, I come to this kind of an occasion. So um, I, I sat down last night to uh, write um, my feelings and comments uh, about this uh, amazing uh, report. Um, and even though I'm computer literate, I'm not that fast um, in typing. So, um, and I think rather freely uh, whenever I use a pen. Uh, and that does not make me uh, computer illiterate. Um, so if you find that I, I do uh, become a bit slow uh, in making my remarks, it's because I'll be trying to read my own and writing. So my friend, uh, uh, Professor Wangwe, the chair of the Tuaweza board, uh, my very dear friend, um, uh, Excellency the Ambassador of Sweden, uh, Professor Sumra, my friend Rakesh, and can I say uh, all protocols observed, uh, my dear friends uh, who have come uh, to this very, very important event, and I'm really excited uh, by the interest uh, that is reflected in this very broad and wide uh, audience. I mean, it clearly shows uh, the importance that is attached by each and everybody, not just in this room, uh, but in the whole East African region uh, on this particular report, which is a landmark uh, report. So first of all, I really want to thank uh, uh, Uwezo uh, for inviting me to join you uh, on this occasion, uh, marking the launch of the report uh, titled, Are Our Children Learning? And I really want to pay special thanks to my friend Rakesh uh, for the efforts um, in securing uh, the best possible participation at this important uh, and historic event. Together, uh, him and I, we tried to get the Secretary General uh, of the East African Community Ambassador, Dr. Richard Sezibera, uh, to be with us this morning uh, and be the chief guest and not, and not myself. I'm the guinea pig uh, uh, as far as this situation is concerned. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my colleague, uh, the new Secretary General, uh, is preparing to leave for uh, Geneva uh, tomorrow and he's only connecting his flight from Nairobi, so he's not able uh, to be with us uh, but I think we should record our thanks uh, to Dr. Sezibera for uh, undertaking at very short notice uh, a forward, uh, which as you can see, uh, is part of this uh, report. But nothing could ever give me greater pleasure uh, than to uh, be here uh, to participate in what I view uh, as probably the most critical aspect of the challenges that the East African community, and especially Tanzania, uh, faces in social uh, and economic development. Um, interestingly, the question about the quality of education uh, and its close relationship to development is not restricted to developing poor countries. But it is one of those simple assumptions many of us in the global south, in particular, uh, tend to make. Uh, the reality, of course, is different. Uh, if you take the case of the United States, 
which in the 1960s led the world in a number of educational uh, outcomes, uh, that leadership has now declined. And it's largely because uh, the quality of education in the United States uh, from kindergarten uh, to university uh, has declined over time. In fact, the OECD uh, found out in 2006 that the United States ranked 25th out of 30 industrialized countries in math and 24th in science. Worse, cross-country comparisons of U.S. students at two different ages of 9, 2, and 15 revealed that the closer the school leavers came to joining the labor force, the farther they lagged behind their international counterparts in reading, math, and science. McKinsey and Company, the global consulting firm, has estimated that this gap, if the U.S. had bridged it by 1998, and reaching the educational qualities of top performers like Finland and South Korea, the U.S. GDP could have been between 1.3 and 2.3 trillion dollars higher than in 2008. Paradoxically, in August 1981, the U.S. government awoke to the rude realization that the U.S. quality of education was in serious decline, and it proceeded to establish the National Commission on Excellence in Education to review and redress the situation. The report of that commission, whose title will shock you, is A Nation at Risk, the Imperative of Educational Reform. And of course, that report shocked policymakers and the citizens uh, uh, alike in the United States. The report pointed out what was described as the rising tide of mediocrity in American schools. I'm flagging my remarks with the U.S. education background to simply highlight and underscore the point, namely that there is a global concern about declining levels in education. The difference, however, is that some countries, some rich, but some that were not as rich as they've now become, and largely because of putting education, especially primary education, on the front banner of the economic policies, countries such as South Korea have taken giant leaps in improving their educational systems, and particularly their primary educational systems. And for those interested in pursuing this comparative analysis in educational reforms, you may wish to read a McKinsey & Company report which has just been released, authored by Mona Morishad, Chinese Chijioke, who is an African, and Michael Baba, which is titled, How the World's Most Improved School Systems Keep Getting Better, and whose sample covers 20 school systems from different parts of the world, including those in Africa, uh, from Ghana and the Western Cape in South Africa. Friends, allow me to commend Uwezo for undertaking this awesome research that has led to the production of this report. Rakesh, of course, has already introduced us to the process that Uwezo used in obtaining the results of this report. Dr. Ruto has just outlined in very, very clear terms the key findings covered in the report. Therefore, I need not dwell on these two aspects, though I will touch on some of them in clarifying my thoughts. But first of all, let me state that this report has come out at the most propitious time. In July last year, the East African community launched a common market. One of the pillars of the common market is the free movement of labor. And as many of you know, it is this particular freedom, more than the other three freedoms of free movement of people, of services, and of capital, that raises a great deal of anxiety 
and even fear in the EAC region and particularly in this country, Tanzania. At the heart of these concerns is how the variabilities in the quality of education and specifically primary education in the EAC partner states will determine the competitive advantage in securing skilled jobs. The report being launched here provides key insights regarding the context of the anxieties and fears obtaining in the EAC region. To this extent, this report may viciously vindicate the raised concerns and even be abused for what it spells out. This would be unfortunate, unfortunate in my view for two reasons. First, the aim of the report is not to politicize the dynamics of zero-sum game integration. Regional integration can never produce parity win-win outcomes. The purpose of regional integration is to promote incremental win-win outcomes over time through exploiting the advantages of scale and scope and cutting across all the key factors that drive economic growth and improve the quality of the citizens. And of course, education is one such factor for which, of course, much remains to be done in the East African community, though initial work has commenced through the work of the Inter-University Council for East Africa. And this work partly involves the harmonization of education systems and curricula from primary school to university level, and partly in the, to the improvement in the delivery of education through the use of information and communication technologies. The second reason is that the Weser Report spells out a broadly generic crisis of primary schooling in the East African community countries of Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. There is a generalized underachievement by children in our schools, as shown by the high low levels of literacy and numeracy. As alluded to earlier, education is the most critical factor in the social and economic performance of our countries. And this is because the quality of labor that stimulates scientific innovations that are crucial in fostering the productivities of all the sectors of our economies depend on the quality of education, of which primary education uh, is the critical uh, pillar. As an economically integrated region, the Eastern community would inevitably fall behind in competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world if the quality of primary education remains at the levels featured in the Hueso uh, report. I may mention that in the Global Competitiveness Report 2010, out of 139 countries, I think, that are analyzed, Kenya is positioned at number 108, Tanzania at 117, and Uganda at 133 in the pillar of health and primary education. So you can understand that Uwezo is actually bringing out in this report exactly what is also featured uh, at the level of the Global Competitiveness Report uh, in terms of how health, primary health and primary uh, education uh, relate to the competitiveness uh, of the countries uh, in our region uh, that have been analyzed by UESO. Now, my friends, it is generally agreed by educational experts that socially, emotionally, cognitively, academically, intellectually, and in virtually most ways, children become what they learn to become at primary school level. When that opportunity is lost, 
it is invariably difficult to recover it in later stages of school life. In this regard, therefore, the Weser Report is raising an important alarm about the dangers the Eastern community faces as an economic and social project. The integration of the EAC could falter in terms of its planned and envisioned outcomes of integration if the outcomes from its primary schools remain what they are today as featured in this Weser report. The second major area I wish to address myself to with respect to this report has to do with the whole question of regarding the realization of the Millennium Development Goals MDGs, sorry, question regarding the realization of the MDGs, and notably the two out of the eight that relate to education. These goals relate to the achievement of universal primary education, what we call UPE, by 2015, and relatedly ensuring that by 2015, all girls and boys complete a full course of primary schooling. You'll agree with me, and the Weser report acknowledges this fact, that UPE has been successful and gross enrollment ratios for boys and girls in the EAC region are one of the highest in Africa. However, we have witnessed government expenditures allocated to primary education skyrocketing in the past 10 years. A United Nations report financing education in Sub-Saharan Africa shows that the proportion of public spending on education in Sub-Saharan Africa is average 5% of GDP. The Weso report offers, for the first time in East Africa, a solid, rigorous, and robust, well-researched analysis and results on the current status of education, which I think if well internalized and appropriate interventions taken on them, the ESC able to see a dramatic transformation in the quality of primary schooling outcomes. The time is now, our nations are indeed at risk and we can, as governments, as parents, as the private sector, and as civil society generally, change the course of our destiny and make East Africa and here in Tanzania a region of talent, of innovation, of resourcefulness, and of competitiveness. I want to say once again, well done, Weso, and continue the good work. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you.